Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's again a joy even to meet you in this time of meditation. Even today, uh, we'll be meditating chapter 24 of the Gospel of Matthew. So, uh, so chapter 24 onwards begins the sign of end times where Jesus was talking. This particular chapter, chapter is about is, is a question, uh, is an answer to the question that the disciples asked. Look at verse, uh, uh, verse 3. Tell me, the disciples came to him privately and they asked him, Tell us, when will these things be or, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So, chapter 23, Jesus ended up by talking on all the woes. He was scolding the Pharisees. He was pointing out all their mistakes and he was warning the people. Before, before he ascends back to heaven, he was giving them what the east of the Pharisees looked like and how the people needs to need to be very careful while handling these Pharisees. So as he was talking about after, at, at the end of it, uh, I, 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 it really, I, I was really wondering the first verse of chapter 24, it says the disciples took Jesus out on a tour to, to show the buildings of the temple of the synagogue. In other words, Jesus was going on a church tour. Um, look at verse, verse 1 of chapter 24. The disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. So they, they were showing all the grand buildings of the temple which Herod had just built. You know, this temple that Jesus was... Uh, going around where he he overthrew the he overturned the tables of the money changers and everything. This was not the temple of Solomon. The first temple was built by Solomon, which was destroyed by uh, Babylonians. After that, the temple was built again by Zerubbabel, and uh, which again was destroyed. Then the third temple was the one that Christ ha was walking in. That was built by Herod to please the Jews. And even that temple was later destroyed by the Romans during the time of Emperor Nero. And now the fourth temple is a temple that we are all waiting that will be built someday uh, in Jerusalem before the coming of the Lord. So, uh, so this is the day he was watching around the temples. And as he was looking at the buildings, uh, Jesus said to them, Do you not see these things? Surely I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that everything will be destroyed. <laughs> the very temple which was used to worship God, Jesus says that will be destroyed. And as he said, it was destroyed uh, in a few years time from the time Jesus ascended into heaven during the time of Emperor Nero. Now, a question came to me, why was the temple destroyed? Why did, uh, why, why did God allow the temple to be destroyed? And uh, uh, I could find out three answers. I hope you will agree with me all these three answers. The first one is the sin of the people. The sins of the people accumulated so much. You know, you remember the temple of Solomon, uh, Jesus, sorry, God allowed uh, Nebuchadnezzar to come and conquer both Israel and Judah and to destroy the cities, burn the burn Jerusalem down and even the temple. So for the first reason is because of the sin of the people. Number two, uh, to prove that the law was abolished. The temple is a place where the law was practiced. So God was giving them a lesson that the law is completely abolished. So the first one is because of the sins of the people. Number two, saying the law is abolished. God's way of telling that the law was abolished. And number three, uh, to stop the continuation or the growth of Judaism. So, Jesus, so God had made a new way, the way of Christ. And God wanted to stop the continuation of Judaism, even though still Judaism as a religion, it is still practiced. But I think uh, the very few of the reasons why God let the temple to be destroyed. So when 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 God when Christ talked about all this destruction, these guys come to Jesus privately. And this chapter 24 is completely a private talk between Christ and his disciples. Now today, the, the message of second coming is for the church. It is not for the world because Jesus is coming back for the church. Uh, but today, very shockingly, um, we talk we, uh, so much of unbelievers uh, are being talked about, taught about or they've been threatened about the coming of the Lord. But it is actually the second coming of the Lord is not just a warning message to the church, but it is also a letter of love 
to the church if the bridegroom is going to come the bride needs to be happy the, the bride needs need not get scared unless and until the bride uh, has in some way cheated the groom so this uh, signs of the coming of the lord is not uh, is not a, is is not something that we need to be scared of but it is wow the groom is coming back for the church <clears throat> so uh, so when they ask this question uh, jesus uh, starts to answer them and he begins from the the signs from chapter uh, from verse 4 and he goes on till verse 44 so after that he ends up with a parable so uh, here it is basically this entire chapter is actually an answer to one question of the disciples what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of ages so jesus talks on um, talks on many many different signs almost uh, as much as 24 to 20 25 different signs so he talks about deceptions there will be many people who will deceive you and jesus says the there will be false christs there will be wars rumors of wars there will be famines there will be pestilences there will be earthquakes and uh, at the uh, and as he was talking about it he says in verse 8 all these are the beginning of sorrows now after talking about wars uh, nation rising against nation of a famine such a pestilence he says hey man this is just the start this is just the beginning mm. and then uh, and then he goes on to say uh, there will be betrayals there will be hatreds there will be anti-semitism uh, look at verse 9 it says you know they will deliver you they will up uh, you deliver you up to tribulation they will kill you you will be hated uh, there will be again god says there will be false prophets everywhere and then in verse 12 it says uh, verse 12 it's something uh, it's it, it's it's a it's, it's a very important verse uh, verse 12 it says but lawlessness lawlessness will abound and love of many will grow cold and today we see that so much you know newborn babies you know pushed through the drain of the toilet love us love is becoming cold you know fathers rising against children uh, children rising against parents and all that that's what it says sin will abound lawlessness will abound and uh, the love of many will grow cold and uh, but then verse 13 and verse 14 uh, gives us some hope it says but he who endures to the end shall be saved and verse 14 gives us a hope as much as all these increases these wars these earthquakes these famines these sins uh, as much as all these increases it says even the gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a witness to all the nations in the world then the end will come so here jesus talks about uh not just about uh wars and all about the negativity but even about the increased uh missionary work he talks about martyrdom he talks about tribulations um he talked he talks about uh look at look at look at even look at verse verse 38 even he talks about sex crimes like the days of noah uh, sexual crimes today which which we see is in a great uh, increase uh, he talks about lethargy he talks about procrastination you know deciding that today i'm not going to do i'm going to do uh, do it some other day so literally he touches on every topic that is happening uh, in today's world so as he was talking about it uh, there are few verses that i touched here and there i'm not touching everything for example look at uh, look at verse 24 it says uh, for false prophets a false christ and false prophet will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive if possible even the elect they, they will try to destroy to deceive even the elect people who are chosen you know we read in the previous chapters many are called only few are chosen even that chosen even those who are elected by god commissioned by god the devil will try even to do it and it says with great signs and wonders at the end of days we can see devil operating with with, with mighty power doing lots of wonders you know it's not when god does lots of wonders the devil will say hey even i can do miracles even i can do wonders so you also try to do as many wonders as possible another verse that i want to touch here is this uh, look at uh, look at verse 26 it says therefore if they say to you look uh, he is in the desert don't do not go out or look he is in the inner rooms uh, do not believe it. i was wondering what is this inner room what is this inner room and and, and as i was trying to contemplate and connect what is the, what is this inner room when you read second thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4 when paul was talking about the antichrist uh, in second thessalonians 2 4 he says uh, who opposes and exalts exalts himself above all that and is called god or that is worship he sits as god in the temple of god and shows himself that he is god 
he sits in the temple he sits in the inner sanctum of the temple and he says i am god that is what here christ wants it if somebody says he is in the inner rooms don't go there don't believe it similarly similarly look at verse 5 many will come to you in my name saying i am christ you know he doesn't say i am jesus he says christ christ means savior the anointed one many will come not just saying i am jesus but many will come i am the christ i am the only one who can save you but don't believe them many will come and go and sit in the inner room many will come and saying i am christ i am the christ that you have been you have been waiting for so many years but don't believe them you know there are there are uh, look at verse 30 you know I'm, I'm not reading all the verses 30 the son of man coming you then will then you will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory you know when when you when we need when we read acts chapter 1 verses 9 and 11 9 to 11 we will see christ taking christ being taken up in the clouds and just like how he went through the clouds he will be coming back from the clouds and it says he will sound his angels with a great trumpet the great sound of a trumpet you know these are literal angels it's not spiritual angels you know look at verse 30 they will see the son of man coming the coming of the lord they will see with their natural eyes the coming of the lord is not a spiritual event the second advent of christ is not just a spiritual event but it is a physical event that people will see with their natural eyes just like how the first coming of first advent of Christ was not a spiritual event, but a physical event. It happened just like that. Even the second advent of Christ is not a spiritual event, but people will see that. A great trumpet will be sounded. You know, in the Jewish customs, every time when uh, uh, when, Israelite, when Israelites they have to gather together, a trumpet will be sounded. It's, always, will be, it's almost like uh, in school, a PT master's whistle, a teacher's whistle. When the whistle sound goes, everybody come, comes together. They assemble together. Here, when a trumpet is sounded, they will gather the elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. They all will come together. And uh, but in all this, but in all this, in verse 36, he says, But of that day or the hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. I do, he says, even I do not know when I'm going to come. But when the father says, go, I go. No one knows. You know, look at verse 43. It says, what hour the thief would come, the master of the house would not know it. But the thief will come when at an unexpected time. Therefore, you also be ready for the son of man will come at an hour that you do not expect. You know, today the world, the way the world goes. The way the world is enjoying, the way the world is uh, celebrating itself. Now they are not expecting God. You know, somebody said, you know, for two thousand years, God, Christ has been saying, He'll come, He'll come, He'll come. Why, why should I be worried? Let Him come anytime. Let me live the life that I, the, the way that I want to live. The moment that we don't expect, that is the moment He will come. It is in this context. He, we end. He, this chapter ends with a parable. He talks about a faithful servant and an evil servant. Look at, look at verse 45. Who then is a faithful servant? Look at verse 46. Blessed is that servant whom when his master, who, whom his master when he comes will find so doing. You know, when a master comes, he will find that servant to be faithful and will keep working whatever that the master had asked him to do. But the evil servant will find his will find the master will find that evil servant not looking after the job that the master gave him but instead being drunk and beating up his fellow servants you know when we read this chapter in verse 40 and verse 41 we will find two men will be in the field one will be taken one will be left similarly in verse 41 two women will be grinding at the mill one will be taken and the other left I'm not going to talk about the people who, who are left in both the verses. But when Christ comes, all these people will be working. You know, when Jesus was taken up into heaven in Acts chapter 1, uh, all these people will be looking uh, looking up into the skies. And two angels will appear and an angel will say, Why are you looking up into the sky? Go and do mind your business. Go to Jerusalem. Go carry on with your work. 
for the same way he was taken up he will come back christ will come at his appointed time but we need to keep working whether it is in the field or whether it is grinding in the at the mill we need to keep doing whatever that god has given us faithfully because when the master comes he has to find he has to see us working and not lazing around or doing any kind of corruption but he needs to find us working around yes beloved this is a chapter where uh, which talks about the end of christ's coming it doesn't matter uh, what is going to happen before he comes it is going to go worse and worse but make sure of one thing uh, he is going to come how will he come when will he come no one knows you know the, the bible talks matthew 24 27 he'll come like a lightning you know when you read matthew 24 30 to 51 he'll come with destruction he'll come visibly that people can people can see him coming read read second thessalonians chapter 1 verse 7 to 10 he will come in brightness and fire he will come with vengeance and wrath read matthew 16 27 24 27 to 31 you will see him coming with power and great glory he will come with saints and angels he will come in the clouds he will come as a judge and a king and even it says he will give him he will come as a thief he will come at the time when we least expect him in the first advent of christ he came as a babe in a manger as a helpless child he came but in the second advent when he comes he will come with his angels with renchens and wrath in great power and glory as beloved the coming of the lord is sure but when he comes will he find us working faithfully for him or will he find us lazing around let us uh, meditate this chapter more in a sense that we will save our souls and not just will fill our minds you know this talks about many events it says the sun will be darkened the moon will stop giving its light the stars will fall today many people when you talk about the sun the second coming of christ we 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 meditate on that scientifically hey is this happening that is happening so uh, yes of course connecting the dots is good hey this is happening in russia that is happening in israel this is happening in palestine that is happening in america okay so what is god what is magog okay it's good to do that but more than that the the the, the real issue is am i ready for the coming of the lord am i ready so that i will be you know in the next chapter you will find out so that i will go on the right side of god and not on the left side of god i think it is very important that we are prepared we prepare our souls for the coming of the lord and not just our intellectual minds may god speak to you much more stay blessed in jesus name amen amen 